name is Irina Swanson and today I want to show you how to make these zigzag quilts. You could have vertical zigzags, horizontal ones, you could have tip angle 45 degrees or 60 degrees or actually any angle uh, and of course you can vary the sizes. This here for example could be made into a baby quilt and this one here could possibly be a uh, a table runner or I combined three of them into this adorable bigger quilt. Okay. So uh, what I will be showing you today is how to make these two quilt tops so 60 degrees and these widths are three inches, this width in the blues and this width in the reds, this is uh, six inches. You could change this to any width and uh, twice that width, um, but for this you should cut uh, three, uh, you should cut four yellow strips from selvage to selvage at strip width three and a half inches. You should cut two blue and two red strips at strip width six and a half inches, also from selvage to selvage. So here are my cuts. And then on the yellow ones, you should mark on the right uh, edge, just in the margin, I have pencil marks at one and three quarters of an inch down. And on the red and blue, I have pencil and pin marks at three and a half inches down. Uh, why do I do these marks? Because when I sew the strips together in the appropriate color or alternation, wherever the mark is in one strip, that's where the next strip starts. Wherever the mark is, that's where the next strip starts. And the idea is that we want to be creating uh, 60 degree uh, offset here. Okay. If your angle is something else, all the, these marks come at the finished width. So take your strip width, subtract uh, double seam allowance, subtract half an inch, and multiply by cotangent of your angle. Okay. So once you have these sewn together, press all the seams towards the dark fabrics, and after that you make an accurate 60 or whatever angle cut. So make sure that the 60 degrees is not just here, but also here, here, here. So take time to do this accurately. Okay. Then what you do is you sew the two outer edges together. And this job has to be done very accurately. So the uh, edges are straight, so the seam will be straight, but there will be a little bit of twisting because we have a uh, this offset here. Make sure that wherever the V is formed by the two uh, edges here, that point here is at a quarter of an inch from the edge here. Anyway, you sew this all the way around, uh, also all the way down, um, press that latest seam towards the dark and turn inside out and what you get is what I call a primary wide tube. This is a tube. Okay, so. Um, and then from this primary wide tube, you cut out primary narrow tubes. And the width of these is the same as the width of the yellow strips. So in my case, three and a half inches. Right? So cut out as many as you can. And then, remember we're making these two. To get these two, there are two ways that you have to combine them. So one way of combining them is have the yellows offset this way and make sure that the other two colors here are not both red, but one is red, the other one is blue. And it's, this forces the other uh, match of yellows this way. We also have blue and red. So you sew this all the way around and uh, many of them and what you are starting to build is this one here. If instead you uh, combine the yellow is the other way, and again, uh, make sure that you have red and blue at each one of them, then you're starting to make this. Right? So in any way, however you combine them, you probably have to pin to make sure that the yellows come together at points. And because I made these tubes big enough, um, sewing these tubes together is no harder than sewing a flat piece of fabric. So very comfortable to sew. Anyway, um, so we have two ways of combining them and these are the resulting secondary wide tubes. 
This one goes here, and this one goes there. Okay. Um, now, let's take this one here. Um, of course, after you uh, sew seams, you may want to press them. But sew, uh, pressing on a tube may be hard. But it's actually good enough if you just press down one of the dark blue um, pieces and just enough so that you can reliably measure halfway distance uh, between the, the, these vertices and these vertices. So I mark these with a pencil all the way around, uh, along and then once you have a pencil mark then you cut with scissors one layer of the tube only, don't cut the back side. You cut and I already did that obviously and once you make that full cut, what you get is a parallelogram. Okay. Now that this is flat, it's easy to press all the seams. And this is starting to look like, all right, we have something like this. Right. Okay. So now all it remains to do is make one vertical cut. I will show you that. So here is one such vertical cut. And then you take this one side and you move it to the other side and make this final seam and you have a rectangle just like this one. Okay? So this is how we finish this. Now for finishing this one here, uh, again, you press just enough uh, along one of the dark um, swaths here, cut through scissors. Now this is a very long seam. And then uh, once you cut with scissors through one of the layers, here's what you get. In this case, you get one very long parallelogram and this was originally up here. Then you make a horizontal cut. Then take this piece and move it down to the bottom. And what you end up with is this quilt. Right. Okay, so if you did the counting, you will notice that each one of these was made with exactly 17 seams total. Well, here I also added the border. But in any case, if you want to know more about my method, please visit www.tubepiecing.com